It would appear that no team in Formula 1 this season is capable of being consistent, with each one going through peaks and troughs at different points of the year. Red Bull started strong but had a prolonged dip mid-season, relying on arguably the greatest driver in the world at the moment to bail them out. McLaren have experienced some major teething issues in regards to how they approach a championship battle, and oh boy, don't even get me started on Mercedes. The front of the field has certainly been hard to keep track of, and the fight at the back has been one of the most intense ones that we've seen for quite some time. Time. However, there is one team that has gone from the sharp end all the way to the depths and back, to the extent that they've suddenly risen into championship contention right when it matters. Scuderia Ferrari have all the makings of a championship winning team, so why then have they not been able to pull it together yet, and will they be able to by the end of the season? Want to know why Ferrari could be in for a shock championship victory this year? And stick around, because if they don't claim the title this year, there are worrying signs that they may have let their best opportunity slip. Brazil was truly a weekend to forget for Ferrari, with Charles Leclerc struggling to move forward and ultimately falling victim to the red flag coming after his pit stop, and Carlos Sainz crashing twice in one day, having more of an impact on the barriers than the race itself. The upwards trajectory that the team has experienced since Monza came to a sudden and violent stop in the rain at Interlagos, and it seems to have caught everyone at the team by surprise. Just the week prior, Ferrari managed to secure a strong double podium, and just one week before that they cantered home to one of the more dominant one-twos of the season. So just where did it all go wrong for Ferrari in Brazil? Even if both cars had stayed on the track, they wouldn't have even troubled Verstappen at the front, though Charles was contending for a podium prior to the red flag, with a pretty major issue being that they just could not challenge the cars ahead of them. Carlos Sainz had a pretty major setback in qualifying, having to start from the pit lane, following a crash in qualifying earlier on in the day. The incident would typically be one that the team could recover from even if they had to change core components and start from the pits. However, the three-hour window between Q3 and the lights going out limited how effective the engineers could be in regards to getting the car optimized for the race start. Sainz was clearly frustrated with the way that the weekend panned out, with him claiming that despite his efforts, moving forwards in the SF24 just was not possible this weekend. Oh, just two very strange, unfortunate crashes today. A bit of a nightmare day. Honestly, the two of them, no sign of me crashing, so I couldn't do anything to avoid them. But at the same time, it was not easy out there to overtake. So starting from the pit lane, it was always going to be difficult to make it to the points. Apologies to the whole team for the two crashes. I hope we can come back strong. But according to Carlos, regardless of the crashes, the SF24 seems to have a key weakness when driving in wet weather, with the Spaniard backing his own abilities being capable of driving well in the wet if given the car to do so, saying, I've always been a very strong driver in the wet, but for some reason, ever since I tried this car in the wet this year, I've never had a good feeling with it. I don't know if we just don't put enough energy into the tires, we run it too steep in medium to high speed or what it is, but it's clear that it's very unpredictable and very difficult to drive. And it wasn't just Carlos Sainz that struggled at Interlagos. Despite the rift in positions between the two Ferrari drivers at the time of Sainz's crash, both of them reported very similar issues with how the car handled in wet conditions. Unlike Mercedes, where Russell had the car under control, while Hamilton reportedly was driving the F1 equivalent of a Henry Hoover, Ferrari had, once again, the greatest correlation between their two drivers out of the front-running teams. According to Charles Leclerc, the team can overall be happy with the weekend, however that may not be down to the merits of their own performance. The pace just wasn't there, except maybe in qualifying. I think in qualifying we weren't that bad with new tyres and low fuel, but in the race, we were going nowhere. But more than just lacking competitiveness, the problem was the car was very difficult to drive. It was extremely challenging to not make mistakes, and in the end, looking at the overall picture, the only thing we can be somewhat satisfied with is that we finished ahead of the two McLarens and only lost a few points. We managed to limit the damage well in a weekend where they seemed very strong. However, something that is worth remembering is the fact that Ferrari have actually been strong in the rain at points this season, with Canada being a particularly good race for the Scuderia, so either the car has been upgraded in a way that disagrees with wet weather, or the track layout and reportedly terrible surface left Ferrari in a compromised position. Either way, the fact that both drivers reported similar issues and are adamant that the team are more than capable of finishing the season strongly is a great sign for Ferrari, as they are a mere 36 points behind McLaren, with Leclerc still still very much in the running for P2 and the Drivers' Championship. A good balanced team, a car that is pegged to be strong for the remainder of the season, and arguably the best driver lineup on the grid. What could possibly go wrong? 
while the fact that the team are breaking up said driver lineup in favor of bringing in Lewis Hamilton, a man who, while certainly no slouch and still one of the greatest drivers of all time, seems to be in somewhat of a rut at the moment. The Brit seems to have entirely lost all motivation, and it's become apparent that, despite his two wins and constant thanking of the garage and those back at the factory, he feels that he cannot get out of the Brackley team quick enough. This weekend seemed to be a breaking point for the seven-time world champion as he gave a scathing interview following the race, saying, Yeah, well, the race was crap. Saturday was terrible, today was terrible, yesterday was bad, qualifying was bad, the sprint race was bad, the car's just been bad all weekend. And yeah, that does seem to be an accurate recalling of Lewis Hamilton's weekend, with him struggling in and around the same areas as the RBs and Sergio Perez, while his teammate canters off down the road, managing to find performance, and should have on merit possibly won the race. Now, while we could put all of this down to the driver being specced towards the driver that isn't leaving the team for one of their biggest rivals next season, it would appear that the cause of Hamilton's hatred towards the W15 is a familiar issue that plagued most of the field just a couple of years ago. Hamilton in a separate interview continued to lay into the team, as well as indicate that the end of his Mercedes tenure cannot come soon enough, saying, I just put my focus on something else. I'm not fighting for the championship. It really doesn't matter to me where we finish in the championship. I don't care if I finish ahead of George or behind George. It doesn't make that big of a difference to me. I just want to keep the car out of the wall and try and score points if I can for the team. If I can finish well and they give me a good car that doesn't bounce off the track for the next few races, then hopefully we will get a better result. Looking forward to Christmas. The recent years for Hamilton at Mercedes have certainly not been easy, with 2021 being the last truly competitive year for the Brackley team before absolutely nosediving in 2022 and never truly recovering, save for a few wins this season between their two drivers. Hamilton's exit from the team in the final year of the current regulations is a roll of the dice similar to his exit from McLaren, however this time it is much different and the reason why may be of great concern to Ferrari. Hamilton still clearly has the minerals to put a win-capable car on the top step of the podium, there is no questioning of that. However, will Hamilton's status as a driver at the back end of his career, as well as the fact that he hasn't been fighting at the front and has seemingly given up on the season, combine together to have blunted the seven-time world champion's capability? Like we said, Hamilton is still capable of being the best driver on track on his day. However, will that translate to the energy and capacity to perform over the course of a close title fight next season and, Ferrari will hope, into the new regulations? And more importantly, will bringing in a driver of Hamilton's prestige and capabilities upset the apple cart and potentially leave Ferrari worse off than if they had kept possibly the closest driver pairing on the grid? I guess we'll find out next year, but for the time being, Ferrari should be keeping an eye on Hamilton, or possibly even looking the other way entirely in fear that they have made an incredibly rash and costly decision in more ways than just one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching.